Hi there, I'm David Hunt, owner of Game Masters Guild. Today, I'm going to introduce to you a book that you can use for your next horror role-playing game, and more specifically, your next Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Now, of course, this book you can use really for just about any game system, because what I like about it is there's actually no stats, and I think a horror role-playing game should be less about the stats and more about the horror and the ambiance. Although the mechanics do play a very important part in any game by keeping it fair and impartial and being able to resolve such things as combat and, well, determining insanity. So let's get to it and take a look at S. Peterson's Field Guide to Lovecraftian Horrors. Now what's cool about this field guide? It's kind of thin. Well, again, there's no stats in it whatsoever, so it's super streamlined. The book is highly illustrated and from Azatoth to Cthulhu, to Zug, you got all the Lovecrafting creatures in here that you're going to need, as well as a handy table of contents where they're all organized alphabetically, as well as a two-page chart for identifying Lovecraftian monsters, which actually might be kind of cool in playing the actual Call of Cthulhu game itself. Perhaps the players find an old notebook or someone old notes on a computer and they, there's this field guide here for identifying these Lovecraftian monsters, these cosmic horrors. And the players can utilize that as an aid to help determine what mysterious creatures there are out there. Now, you might say, well, all they got to do is, you know, look, and clearly it's a great race of Yig, or they can identify Cthulhu or Zug or a great one. However, if you play horror right, and it's something you should always strive for, and that's to not reveal too much. You don't just walk in and look, oh, it's a star spawn of Cthulhu. Oh, it's a werewolf. Oh, it's a vampire. You need to build up clues, hints, misdirection. You need to have the players doubt what they're seeing and jump at shadows and creatures that aren't there. And that's where Peterson's Guide to Lovecrafting Horrors comes into play. And some of these creatures matter of fact, all of them are particularly hideous. And you can see very easily how you could take and describe them in such a way to where the players can't even really wrap their heads around it. And the most important thing about horror is you shouldn't just open the book and show them the picture. Now, you should, you should keep that to yourself and describe the elements that at most they're going to be able to see. And of course, a good horror game is best played, uh, to me, late at night with subdued lighting. And in the character's world where they're going to be at, that's when things strike. That's when things happen, is in the dark. Well, I hope you enjoyed my look at Peterson's Guide to Lovecrafting Horrors. I hope you'll agree, after watching this video, that this might be something you need to add to your next Call of Cthulhu game, or any game for that matter, even... Dungeons and Dragons, who wouldn't mind just a little bit of horror dropped in to throw their players off track in a game. Well, oh, well, and to keep them up at night and keep them on their toes. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my look at this interesting book. I love this book. And um, as always, I'm Dave Hunt, owner of Game Masters Guild, Tell you to stay very safe, play great games, keep a light at all, at all times, and I'll see you real soon.